Market ratios. Market ratios are used by investors to assess the performance of companies as well as to compare different investment options, such as two different companies, a company in a term deposit, or any other investment options. The earnings per share ratio is expressed as the profit after tax, less preference dividends, over the weighted average number of ordinary shares. The weighted number of ordinary shares considers the average number of ordinary shares over the financial period. For example, if a company had 52,000 shares for the first 100 days of the year and had an additional share issue, increasing the total shares to 62,000 shares for the remainder 265 days of the year, the weighted average is 59,260 shares. The earnings per share ratio quite simply tells us the amount of profit after tax, less preference dividends per ordinary share. If the earnings per share ratio is higher, this is an indicator that profitability has improved. Then an investor would be more confident knowing that he or she may expect a higher dividend. But this is not always the case. A business's earnings per share ratio can still decrease when there is a positive increase in profitability, where increases in profits are insufficient to meet additional share capital. For example, if a business had a profit of $10 and 10 ordinary shares, then the earnings per share is $1 per ordinary share. If the profit increases from $10 to $15, but there was an additional share issue of 10 shares, then the earnings per share would decrease by 75 cents per ordinary share. Price earning ratios measure the amounts investors are willing to pay for shares. The price earnings ratio is calculated by the market price per ordinary share divided by the earnings per ordinary share. A high price earnings ratio suggests that investors have high expectations for the business's future profitability, or it could have been overvalued. Vice versa, a low price earnings ratio suggests investors have low expectations, or the share price could be viewed as an opportunity and undervalued in the market. The dividend yield shows the amount of dividends per ordinary share relative to its market price. This analysis calculates the return on the investment over the financial period, usually a year. This analysis, however, ignores capital gains and losses, that is, the gains or losses made on the fluctuating share market prices. For example, consider a company called XYZ Limited. Its share price is $10 per ordinary share, and its recent dividend is $1 per ordinary share, making its dividend yield 10% per annum. Say you buy 10 shares, so your portfolio is valued at $100. By the end of the financial year, the business pays the same dividend, $1, but its share price has depreciated to $5 per share. While the dividend yield has increased to 20% per annum, so your portfolio should increase by 20%, from $100 to $120. However, you receive $10 in dividends, but you made a capital loss of $50, so your 10 shares are now worth $60. While the dividend yield has increased, the portfolio has decreased by $40, a decline of 40%. Remember, market ratios are based on past performance of a business. While users can use historical data to predict trends, actual results will always differ. Also remember, market ratios such as price earnings ratios and er earnings per ordinary share are based off share market prices, which fluctuate greatly on a daily basis. Therefore, market ratios are limited in being reliable for a limited amount of time.